My name is Christine Carligan, co-president of Korean American Parents Association of Greater New York. Represent all uh, Korean American and Asian American in you know, New York tri-state area. My job is parent coordinator in the middle school, junior high school in New York uh, public school, and I volunteer as a co-president of a Korean American Parents Association. So, uh, whatever that uh, the time that I don't work, and people call, and sometimes people uh, write email. Well, I just like I came here as a student, and I got married, and my I have my children. So, um, like I think it. I think of it as a community in my family, so volunteering is really rewarding. And also, um, as a, a volunteer, as a, the president of Korean American Parents Association, and also parent coordinator, because we learn a lot of uh, new uh, information about the education. So I love to share with the other people, and this is a wonderful feeling. It was right after September 11th. And at uh, that time, I was PTA president of a junior high school 189, uh, Flushing, Queens. It's a junior high school my children is attending. And I was a PTA president. As a PTA president, I was attending uh, district-wide the uh, PTA president and principal and get together the parents' involvement meeting. And I was representing my school. And I said, what I said was, we have a great diversity in school. We have Asian, Latino, African American, Indian, and we make like rainbow. We have everybody get together, and this is how we form the PTA executive board. And after the after the meeting, and some lady um, grandma and they said, we need somebody like you, and she she uh, she's from uh, Korean American Parents Association. A month later, I was invited to the meeting. I was uh, nominated. And become a co-president, and that's how I become a president. And it was about 15 years ago. Um, the things that I become uh, who I am, and a strong advocate and volunteer, because um, sometime um, the first generation of the immigrant from Korea, they cannot really change it, and they don't know the system. If let's say they are the victim, or just they just be quiet. Even children are victim. They afraid to go to the school, or maybe if I share with the school, or maybe it might be this benefit to my child. This kind of thinking. Maybe if I go protest, if I do uh, any kind of a uh, speak up, it might be uh, this benefit to me or my child. Or sometimes I'm not documented, or I'm not a citizen, or residents. Uh, I don't have a green card, and things like that I want them to change it. It's okay to speak up because sometimes government or the official, they want to know what's going on with you so that they can change it for the better. But I strongly uh, uh, express myself that we have to change it. If you, something that you, this is unjust and also need to be changed or also let um, the government know, we have to speak up and that's what we have to do. And they're very um, quiet and they think it's not intelligent enough to like go out and speak or have a demonstration and things like that. But that's not system here. Like you have to speak up your mind and so that they can understand what is the, the Korean community uh, want or their difficulty or what is, a, what is their, their suffering. So I think they have to change it but slowly it's taking uh, change time and I'm front of it and I'm happy to do it. <laughs> yeah. The terminology in the textbook is uh, Sea of Japan, which is uh, the terminology they use and they uh, submit it to the IHO during the Japanese occupation. So we have a campaign since 2008 that we have to have a dual reference of Sea of Japan and the East Sea. That's very important because of our obligation to teach our children factual and updated information so in the textbook and the secondly um, the sun rising flag of Japan that's the same as a Nazi flag uh, uh, sweat sticker and then a um, lot of time people don't know what does that mean and it's okay to use it um, unfortunately the uh, Japanese uh, Navy are still using that which is uh, 
not proper because there, there was uh, the flag, the war crime flag um, during the World War II and they cannot use that. But So we have a campaign to let people know as just as the Nazi flag and Sun Rising flag are war crime flag, you cannot use that even though it has a strong uh, red with the, like um, the stri stripe white and red. And we have to um, educate not only the um, student, but we have to educate the people and a lot of time, sometime in the, um, even New York City, they have, uh, they made uh, uh, tourism, um, the flag with that, um, the motif and we asked to remove it and they remove it for us. And also there is a building in Brooklyn, they use the sun rising flag as a mirror, which is not proper. So we asked them to remove it and things like that. So we do a lot of campaign, not only in the school, but uh, to the public as well was something what we should do, what we shouldn't allow it. So because nobody allowed to display the Nazi flag in the public and the why uh, nor um, the Japanese, uh, the war flag, it shouldn't be allowed. So that's our so campaign as well. The Monte Fair Hospital, and then we have one um, the person approached to me and then years ago her husband, is, her husband was attacked in the front of the engineer room and uh, that's a result of a five year of a bullying and because he become a uh, air conditioner engineer and he obtained uh, um, the license uh, study by himself and whatever reason was he was bullying in the hus hospital for five years. So finally one day he was attacked, it was uh, like 2014 uh, October 4th and he was attacked with a, like some kind of hammer uh, big object from the back and he then he his um, the skull was fractured and he was unconscious for two days but thing is when uh, Mrs. Kim uh, bring that to me I ask what is the police report she says she doesn't have the police report and uh, why how come you don't have the I, I say I cannot take any case or I cannot consult with you because you don't have the uh, police report. How do I uh, know that this is actually what happened? And what she told me was a shock because she said that after the actually um, hospital or any kind of big institution, they have a mandatory law. They have, they have the protocol that any kind of incident, they have to report to the police. Well, first of all, Montefiore Hospital didn't report the incident that his, their own employee was attacked in the uh, engineer's room, a low floor, and he was unconscious for two days. They didn't report to the police, and they didn't try to even look for the suspect. And also, and then uh, when uh, Mrs. Kim went to the police and they say, oh, go talk to the security director in the Montefiore hospital. That's wrong. That's violation of law because uh, they, they're supposed to, if a husband is uh, attacked and fractured the skull, of course they have to take the report, but they didn't. So when I, when I hear that, that's like, um, that's like clear um, the sign of the violation of the breaking the law. So then I read about it and look at it and all the evidence and um, only uh, thing that we can do is because there's no police, there's no record, so we did demonstration um, twice, one in uh, December, one in uh, January, and also Tony Abel, the, the New York State Senator, Tony Abella, who is the uh, the Bayside area district and uh, the Mrs. Kim and Mr. Kim uh, has a residence in Bayside so he decided to come to the, um, the front of the Montefiore hospital and he has a press conference about um, they have to first of all and also he sent a letter to the commissioner of the New York City Police Department and also the, uh, the principal of the Montefiore hospital the meeting and they were, I think they received a letter from the commissioner of the New York Police Department that they will look uh, into the uh, incident. And I think they start to have an um, open uh, investigation uh, from the Bronx DA. The reason why I, I really um, want to help uh, this Mr. Kim and Mrs. Kim because 
sign of the, the, they've been bullying for five years and in, in America, federal level or the state level and also citywide, citywide level, the bullying is act of terror. So how come the um, hospital ignored five years of bullying and he reported to the director, engineer department, no response, and that's clear sign of the discrimination. And it, this is prohibited, prohibited in uh, federal law and the state law and city law. So th that's why I said th this is not a just and also no police report and no any kind of the report so far, but we have to uh, stamp the, for the justice. So that's what we did. I just like to share with that because of something that uh, we've been doing, um, the, it was a uh, Kapagni is uh, uh, established in 1990 and until now uh, 25 years we have a we set up the we set up the culture we established we implemented a culture that never had they have like a teacher's day but not like that um, we have a we invite the teacher and also we we share the culture and the performance and the cuisine and also let them be that day and the, you are the most important person so we believe that good education cannot without um, respecting the teacher not only the because the teachers is job but it's not it's beyond the job i think this is a wonderful uh, profession that influence our uh, children and also future and also education is our future so what i like to see is uh, until now um, we invite many time but we never really have a mayor come to the event or present to come to the event or the chancellor we have a lot of deputy chancellor from the education department i think i wish uh, this uh, respecting the teacher and celebrate the teacher's day uh, become a, a culture of a whole United States so that um, children learn that respecting teacher is uh, like bridge to the success for your uh, few, uh, the, the successful education. So that's my vision. Bésame, bésame mucho, como si fuera esta noche la última vez. Bésame, bésame mucho, que tengo miedo a verte, verte después. Que tengo miedo a verte, verte después.